Today's video is sponsored by AutoCast. They sent over their P3 Android car adapter, which also works with Apple CarPlay. Check this out, guys. This thing is amazing. This is what it looks like, and it is complete plug and play. We got a port here, HD out port here, and you could put in a SIM card, or you could just connect this to Wi-Fi. As you can see, it goes to the start screen, right? But then this also turns on, and check this out. Just a little warning, avoid watching videos while the vehicle's in motion. Look at that, that is so cool. So we have like all of these features, everything works with the touchpad. There's so many features, wow. I'm guessing we can change the color of this. So let's see, let's pick that color. Oh wow, changes the whole color of it right here. Guys, check this out. I clicked on sequential, and now it's doing sequential. That is so cool. Wow. So many different lighting features on this, just to give your car a different vibe. Let's see what happens when I pick a different color. Oh, did you guys see that? That is awesome. So this is the home screen, and there's so many things you can do. You can still access Apple CarPlay. There's settings. You can do anything there's so many different things here so many different options to pick from it's kind of cool because it has like a control center just like your phone you can go here to turn off Wi-Fi right now I'm connected to the Wi-Fi there's Bluetooth everything right the best part is if you want to just exit this you can and just go back to your original screen so now I'm going back into the screen and this is how it looks this is awesome Let's test it and watch a video. Look at that, we got we got a mouse. It's like we're on the computer. Oh man, that is so sick. Literally able to watch YouTube while you're parked in the car with nothing to do. That is so awesome. This device is freaking amazing. So with this AutoCast, it supports Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Auto Drive, and you can switch between the three at any given time. You guys can also do split screen mode with this. It goes from 5x5 five five to 7x3 to 3x7, and you can do it at one click of a button, and it will switch it over. You're also able to customize your home page and its components with complete freedom via the UI. It is so awesome. I have it set to this because this is what I currently like. Also, the ambient lighting has so many different modes. There's breathing, strobe, musical, and so much more. I currently have it set to sequential because I like how it gives me this sequential effect and it's very calming and I picked a warmer color because it looks a lot nicer. This is cool. Lots of customization with this little device. This device also supports SIM cards and a TF card. So if you don't want to connect to Wi-Fi or you just don't have access to Wi-Fi on the go, you can put in a SIM card and be on the go and use all of its features. So you don't have to wait till you park somewhere and connect it to your phone with hotspot. You can just have it ready to go with a SIM card. The car that I'm in doesn't have headrest monitors in the back, but the coolest thing about this device is that it supports headrest monitors as well and you'll be able to play on the headrest monitors which is so insane so if you guys had kids and you have a car with headrest monitors you can play YouTube anything for them if you guys are looking for a new cool mod and you actually have Apple CarPlay in your car this is a must because it is a nice subtle upgrade that does so many different things and honestly, I can't see myself not having this on the car anymore. Like, look at that. I've never been able to watch videos on any of my cars, and I think this is the way to go. But remember, you need to use it safely. I also love that you still retain maps, and what can't this thing do? Look at all these apps that are on here. I can even watch Netflix. All I have to do is sign in. That is insane. What can't this thing do? Prime Video, it's got everything. Once you're online, you can obviously do a system update, but there's just so many features to this device, it is endless. I can't believe that you can do all of this with this cool looking little hockey puck. 
This is a must if you're looking to update the infotainment system on your car and you guys can get a little creative with it and see where you want to put this because this is aesthetically pleasing. It looks pretty damn awesome. If you guys are interested in the AutoCast, link is in the description below. Cop now because this thing is going to be going like hotcakes. This is the future. Thank you guys once again for sending over one of these awesome devices to me. Now let's get back to today's video. Alright guys, so I have some shitty news that I was not really planning on talking about today. And I didn't really want to talk about this, but I'm always pretty transparent with you guys, so I just wanted to get this off my chest and let you guys know what happened. As you guys know, a couple videos back, we got a Honda Civic. It was so awesome. I fell in love with the car, started modifying it, and I had some plans for it too. Nothing too crazy, but I definitely loved the car so much. And this one's a little tough to tell because, you know, something like this has never happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to other people. And before I tell you guys the whole story, yes, I put myself in this situation. It kind of sucks, but you live and you learn, right? So what had happened was we found a really clean Honda Civic. I was looking for, I want to say three weeks straight. We looked at a few and they just didn't check off our boxes, seemed really sketchy, red flags all over. We find this one and everything looks great. Carfax checks out. The car itself was in great condition from the photos and I could see everything on the car that was able to be seen. There are a lot of things that I didn't know about the car or the seller. So we made the trip to San Diego. Once we got there, seller was awesome. Everything checked our boxes. There was one thing that I overlooked and I shouldn't have overlooked this. The seller didn't have the car title. They didn't have a pink slip. They had a bill of sale and another form of like title transfer and whatever, basically like three or four forms. On top of that, they did the smog for me that day. So there's proof of that. You know, I overlooked pink slip and title. I know it's so stupid. You're not supposed to overlook that kind of thing, but I've bought a car before where, you know, it didn't have all this and I brought bill of sale and this to the DMV and everything was perfectly fine. I got the title, right? Another thing that I'm so bummed that I overlooked was registration. Every single car, it doesn't matter who you buy it from, where you buy it from, they should have registration, right? If tags are current. You know, the stickers on there are 2025, but there was no registration paper with the owner, the owner's address, their driver's license number, their name, all that stuff, right? I overlooked that, which was very stupid to me. I was just thinking maybe they forgot to bring it. 2025 tags, not a big deal. I'm not thinking in my head that it could be counterfeit or even just illegally obtained. We buy the car for such a great deal. I'm not going to tell you guys the dollar amount, but it was such a great deal. And let's just put it this way. Obviously it's over 10 grand cash, but I'm not going to tell you guys exactly what the amount was. Drive it. Everything checks out. Take it home. Once I got home, the seller conveniently just so happened to leave the country. Honestly, that moment, my heart sank a little bit, but I thought nothing of it. Go to the DMV and they say that there are back fees of $1,500 for the registration for this car. I was like, what the hell? We have 2025 tags. I can go show you right now. They were just going based off of what was on the computer. Tags have not been paid since 2022. That doesn't make sense. How are there 2025 tags? That's when things started getting bad. And I started looking into more things, right? So I asked them if we pay this amount, will I be able to transfer the title? And then they said, no, well, you can't even do that because there's a lien holder on this car. So the first thing I thought was, oh my God, is this still owned by the bank or whoever they went through? I'm assuming it was CarMax because it had CarMax license plates on it. That whole week to two weeks, I was just stressed out, figuring out whatever I could, doing a bunch of research, talking to lawyers, doing whatever I could to figure out, okay, worst case scenario, best case scenario, what can I do? I called CarMax. You know, they're not gonna give me information on the seller and personal anything. So I kind of had to finesse my way, get a certain agent or like this agent and some people were telling me little bits and then another one was telling me little bits and then I finally gathered all the information that I could. So there's a lien holder, it's CarMax. 
they own the car. There's an outstanding balance of $920 that hasn't been paid since last November, which to me is not a big deal. I was asking them, yo, can I pay it with all the late fees? It'd probably just come out to like, what, $1,400, $1,500 if they charge about X amount a day for it being overdue. But that wasn't the issue. The bigger issue was, yo, they own the car. It hasn't been paid. They can repo this car if they want to. Like, are they actively trying to repo this car? I don't know. So I asked them if I could pay it and have the title be sent to me because I bought it off the seller. They said, no, it's going to go to the original owner, which wasn't even the guy who sold me the car. He made up the story that it was his nephew he bought the car for, blah, 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 whatever. I bought it because, you know, you're there, you're anxious. It was my fault for overlooking all these red flags because I was so excited and it seemed too good to be true. And honestly, it was too good to be true. Yeah, it was just a huge ordeal i talked to so many lawyers some of them gave me information but ultimately the only one that helped the most told me everything i didn't want to hear he said go back to san diego file a police report it's gonna cost a lot of money and honestly you might not even get exactly what you want it's still not a for sure thing so i don't want to pay ten thousand dollars plus in legal fees to not even get the outcome that I want. Yeah, there's honestly nothing we could have really done because I didn't have any real information from the, the seller, the guy who sold it to me. And I'm assuming he was using a burner phone or one of those apps where you can just text people and call them through like a random VPN or something. That sucked. I had no one to really go after and try to sue. I'm not going to go back to San Diego and scour the streets looking for this guy because I kind of remember what he looks like. The lawyer said that we can basically just get the lien holder, which is CarMax, the original owner, which I actually have his name and everything on the bill of sale, and then us all three in a courtroom and figure out what happened but it can not be in our favor because carmax didn't know what was going on they could just ask the owner why haven't you been paying it the original owner can easily lie and have a good lawyer just straight up say it got stolen well why haven't you reported it stolen i don't know how they're gonna fight that but either way that's another thing but basically i've never met the original owner he doesn't even know about me or maybe he does maybe the seller and him are in cahoots ultimately if he has a good enough lawyer he could just say i don't know who you are there's no evidence that I ever interacted with you or sold you this car so why do you have my car any anything like that right I have all the evidence screenshots of me and the seller but at this point since I don't know anything about the seller it's almost like he doesn't even exist very shitty situation I'm not even bummed about the fact that I put in work to make the car look better or anything none of that matters it's the fact that we were so excited to have this car be a part of the family she's wanted this car for so long and I feel like I blew it the only other thing I can think of was to just get rid of the car as is because obviously there's no title, there's nothing wrong with the car, there's just no title and registration back fee so I just sold it as is for a significantly less amount compared to what we paid, took a total loss. I want it out of our hair, that's why. because. She could be driving it and a cop can pull her over for whatever they want to and then just say, hey, this car was reported stolen or CarMax is looking for it, it's getting repoed. That would suck. That'd be the shittiest situation ever. So I just wanted nothing to do with it. So we have no affiliation with it. I was able to sell it to someone and I couldn't see myself scamming another person like the way I got scammed. I just can't. So we sold it as a total loss the way it is. The person who bought it knows exactly what's wrong with it. And what's crazy too is they bought it and they're gonna do their own thing. There's a way around all this stuff. You can do like a mechanics lien and it just takes so long and it might cost a lot of money and it's still not a for sure thing, at least for me, cause I'm not well versed in that, that realm. I did research, but I ultimately decided not to go through with that. He told me he drove it around and he said, yo, I got pulled over by the cops because these 2025 registration tags are fake. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like I just got the car the way it was, told you everything that was wrong with it, no title, it's not stolen, it has this remaining balance on it, it's owned by this person, and I gave them all the paperwork that I got. So they can do whatever they want with it, they know exactly what they got. Sucks, but we no longer have the Civic. It's so crazy too because that day that I sold it, the very next day I was supposed to look at some fire BVS wheels for her car. It would have been so sick, deal of a lifetime, I would have never been able to come across 
this deal ever again. It was like kind of some generic BBS wheels, nothing too fancy. Specs are pretty okay, but those BBS wheels were 500 bucks. Already high polish and everything. Oh my God, it would have been so sick. Deal of a lifetime. I still should have gone through with it, but I didn't think my daily was gonna break down. So I shouldn't have been spending that money anyways. But yeah, that is the story. I'm sure you guys in the comments are gonna be like, yo, why'd you do that? You should have been a little smarter about it. Don't worry. I've beat myself up for the last month and a half and things are things are a lot better i know what i want to do personally we know that we want that car again in the future for sure but imagine you're you're losing over 10 grand like my my budget was 15 grand we didn't spend 15 grand but that was the budget and honestly looking back should have just taken it to a dealership which is what I wanted to do. Take it to a dealership, throw down 15 as a down payment and pay the remaining 4,000 or whatever the hell it is, right? For a dealership one, maybe not as low miles, like 20,000 more miles. I think that would have been the right way to do it because at least if they screw you over, you have someone to go after. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been dealing with. So I know there's some of you that have hit me up on Instagram or can even tell in videos that I was a little bit down. You know, it's just one of those things. It's like a little traumatic and you just kind of want to shut out the whole world for a little bit, whether it's like your friends and family and stuff and just kind of keep to yourself and figure out what you're going to do next or even how to just sort of get over this. But it just recently happened. So of course you're going to be bummed about it, but I'm definitely feeling a lot better now. Like I said, we'll work hard to achieve our goals and we'll do it the right way. And if we ever get it again, it'll be better than this one. Yeah, that's what I've been dealing with besides my daily being down. We kind of narrowed down the issues. I thought it was like a fuel pump or something because it wasn't starting, but it was actually vacuum and a little bit of fuel related, but it's not the pump or the fuel pressure regulator. And we're gonna get all that fixed and I will have my daily back. Another thing that kind of sucks is I just found out my axles are both shot when they're brand new, but I guess my car is a little too low. I don't think it's that low. The daily is like the perfect height. But now we gotta figure out some way to get extended axles and make it fit so I don't have to switch axles every six to eight months. Hey, come here, come here, baby. This is my little pup, Haru. Say hi, hi. He's also really bummed that we sold the car because you didn't even get to ride in it, huh? If only you would have been able to get to ride in it, you would have loved it. Yeah, I know this is a different video from what I normally post, but I tell you guys everything. This is just something I had to get off my chest. I need a little bit of time to be able to process what happened and start feeling better on my own, get my mind off of it. I hope that none of you guys have ever been in this situation and I hope you don't ever have to be. Everyone gets scammed. I've been scammed before for a couple hundred bucks, but never over 10 grand. You know, that's like the shittiest thing. It's like, fuck man, that sucks. You can just learn from it and take this in as a life lesson, a very expensive life lesson. And yeah, that's always gonna stick with me. From here on out, I'm not gonna buy a pre-owned car unless it's from a dealership, which sucks to say, but it's very reliable. Or like a family member or friend. Yeah, there's not really much to tell you guys. I think once I get the car fixed, I have another maintenance issue that I have to do with the ES and then from there I think I can finally start fixing up my IS and maybe start doing some some little mods on it or set money aside but we'll see it's all up in the air still I'm just trying to get everything situated right now but if you guys watch all the way till the end or you still watch my videos thank you so much for watching to this day blows my mind still have crazy support you guys are awesome I think I'm gonna end on that note. I just wanted to tell you guys what's been going on. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Honestly, don't share this video because I don't want anyone else to have to go through the same things. <laughs> Other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video. And don't forget, it's always better to look good than to feel good. Oh, later.